Hi everyone, this is Kathy Grosskirk with Bookkeeping Clean and Simple and today is the third video in my current series on how to manage bank feeds as part of my Mastering QuickBooks online videos. And today's video is on updating settings using the baby gear. Now we are in my Kathy Bookkeeping test file and I am in the Banking Center, and hopefully you remember how to get to the Banking Center. You go to the left navigation here, click on Banking, and then click on Banking from here, and that will take you to the page. Now, I will also put the links to all the videos in the comments, so that way you can refer back to them. Now, today, like I said, we are going to talk about the Baby Gear icon, which is this icon right here. So before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and close out this left navigation here. That'll give us a little bit more screen room to work with. So going back to the baby gear, I'm going to go ahead and click on this and I'll probably have to do some scrolling up and down so that we can talk about these things. This is where you can actually go in and you can affect things such as different columns and other things. So we're going to take these a little bit at a time and I'm going to also highlight the ones that you should either turn off or turn on. Now some of these will be turned on by default and these are also sticky settings which means you can go in and you can turn these on or off and they will stay on on or off until you make those changes. So we're going to start with the columns. There's only two categories in the columns that you can affect. The first one is the check number. Now if you have clients or if you write checks that are printable or things like that, then you can go ahead and turn that on and that will create a column your heading for check number which you can sort on so you can bring your check numbers up to the top or whatever if you're working with those. Otherwise, you don't really need to keep the check number column on. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back off. You do want to make sure that the payee column is turned on because you want to make sure that you assign payees to every single transaction that you enter into QuickBooks Online. The only transactions that you won't be able to do that with are transfers generally. So anyway, we are going to leave the payee turned on and then we're going to go down to the next area right here and talk about groups. Now you can turn on grouping and I find that this is really helpful when you're doing a large cleanup because what you can do, for example, is when you turn on grouping, you can click on the date column and that will sort that by either oldest or newest transaction. And what that does is it kind of isolates all those transactions or puts them in an order by month. And it's really nice to do that, to have it kind of neat and tidy that way when you're trying to do a cleanup. So let me go ahead and scroll back down and I'm gonna click on the gear icon. And so I generally leave it off unless I am doing like a huge cleanup. Generally probably won't really need it on if you keep your bank feeds updated. All right, so for these transaction details here at the bottom, I'm gonna scroll back up so you can see all these. And I'm gonna talk about the ones that you should leave on and then the ones you should turn off. I always like to leave on the tags field if you're using tags, so that way you can put those tags in there. You also may or may not want to turn on the editable date field and I will show you what that is. So say if you want to try to match this to a transaction and it falls like over a end of a month to the beginning of the next month or whatever. It just sometimes helps to have those date in the same period. So if you click on, let's say this Wikimedia transaction here, you can see that since I've turned that on, you can actually go in here, this transaction date, and you can change that to whatever you want to use. Maybe the date that the bank transaction shows up on the bank statement is 11-30-2021 or something like that. You can go in here and change that if you want to. If you don't have that setting turned on, however, and I can go ahead and turn that off, then you can go in here and see that same transaction. You can no longer do that with this transaction because I have it turned off. So this is one that you would probably want to turn on or off as needed. So like I said, it's a sticky setting. It'll stay on if you turn it on. And there's not a problem leaving it on if you wanted to. Two other transaction details that you want to turn on is copy bank detail to memo and show bank details. Let me show you what happens when you turn off the show bank details. Now these are not on by default. So you have to actually go in here and turn them on. If you click on this check, you can see you just get very minimal description here and a lot of times it's just best to see more of the bank details so that way it helps with the categorization 
and it just makes it where it does better with the category or match eventually with the AI. So you want to leave those on. And also you want to leave on or turn on enable suggested categorization. And I'm going to use this Walgreens one as an example. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. What happens is that, and this is relatively new. If you scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see when you open up that transaction, you'll see a little pot link for categorization history. You click on that. And within the last 12 months, you can see how those similar transactions were categorized. And in this case, we have these all tagged under a miscellaneous retail vendor. And as you can see, all those transactions in the past were coded as owners paying personal expense. You can click on the details here and find out a little bit more about those. And in probably 89 to 90% of those occurrences, you're probably going to go ahead and use this same categorization for this. You can either click there to assign the category or why not? So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And as you can see, it's changed that to that categorization. And when you go down here and or go up here and look at it, you can see it's changed up here. So let me go back up here to the baby gear again. And so anyway, the couple of things that you want to make sure that you turn off and let's not forget about those is you don't want to turn on show amounts in one column because right now, we have it so that you can see what's spent and received. And if you turn those columns on where you show the amounts in one column, it just makes it more difficult to see the categories of money in, money out. I mean, you can see with the negative number that was money that was spent, but it's going to be more difficult to discern those if you don't have both of those columns turned on. So I suggest leaving that unchecked. And then the other thing I suggest that you leave unchecked as well is show suggested rules. And the reason why I suggest that is because you don't want your clients going in here and adding rules without understanding the syntax of how rules are added. And, and I've seen with a lot of cleanups that I've done is that if the client goes in there and adds a whole bunch of rules based on these suggestions, they kind of work against each other when you add too many of them. So it's just best to go ahead and turn those off in your client files and just if they need any rules, you can go in there and help them create them and better yet, teach them how to use the rules so that way they can use the rules themselves. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is the page size. Now there's five different options for page size and the default is 50 and 50 is probably going to be enough for most of you because you don't want too many on a page where you have to scroll for days and days going down. And so you can readily see how many items total are in this particular bank account that need to be dealt with either at the bottom or at the top here. And then you can just use this little carrot here to scroll through the different pages to see. And you can also click on the number one to go back to the beginning. So anyway, just kind of give you an idea. Again, we're going to kind of scroll through here so you can see all these different options. And like I said, these are sticky settings. If you turn these on, they will stay on or off until you go in there and change these things. Anyway, that's all I have for you all today. And next time, we're going to start working on some of these areas up here underneath the main categories here in the banking center to be able to start doing some entries or exclusions in bulk. So anyway, have a wonderful day, y'all. Take care and we will see you very soon. Thank you for watching. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and share it with others. My goal is to publish at least one new video per week on QuickBooks desktop or online topics the occasional motivational video, and a few surprises thrown in here and there. I would love to talk to you about how to help you optimize your knowledge and usage of QuickBooks Desktop or Online. My Calendly link is in the slide. Please use that to reach out to me to schedule a free 45-minute initial consult. I would love to talk to you about your QuickBooks Desktop or Online training needs. Again, have a wonderful day, and until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care.